Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Colorado Sports TV's coverage of the CSU Rams versus the Arizona Wildcats. This is going to be the most unique broadcast I have done for hockey ever. An hour ago, the arena's scoring unit was damaged beyond use tonight. So they're going to be keeping score only on the sideline in the officials box. There will not be a publicly dis viewable scoreboard or score clock for us yeah, to show you or for the players to really use off of. So it's, it's going to be unique. Um, we're going to do our best to bring it information to you. And hopefully we will we'll be able to, to hear when they do announce the clock times. Because right now the plan is to just go ahead and call out the times over the PA system. So it's going to be a unique night. We hope you enjoy the coverage. We're going to do our best to keep you informed as what's going on as, as we can. Uh, we, but we don't have use of the official scoreboard. And with this, we'll turn you over to the house announcers as the Rams have entered the ice. Going to have lineup announcements here in just a second, and then we'll get the game underway.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're just about ready to get the action underway here in Fort Collins with Colorado State University taking on the University of Arizona. It's going to be the rematch between these two teams as last night they played. Arizona able to come away with the win after scoring an empty net goal while they had the one goal lead. The Rams were trying to pull the goalie into last minute desperation and Arizona was able to take that puck away and put it in the back of the net to secure the win. So that moves the Arizona to seven and one while the Rams now are down to three and five. Again, you're watching Colorado Sports TV covering this action for you. I'm Lichos Castro. Unfortunately, Tristan Anderson is not gonna be with us tonight. So I will do my best to cover both ends of the commentary for you. Hopefully you appreciate the sound of my voice <laughs> and we'll get this action right underway. Believe me, they appreciate your voice a lot more than they do mine. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you didn't hear the opening announcement as we started up here, the score clock is not going to be working with us tonight, so we're going to be relying on uh, the booth callouts as far as times and goals and penalties for all the fun keeping track of that. So. Again, like we said, it's gonna, like you said, it's gonna be a unique broadcast. It will be the most unique hockey broadcast to date, <laughs> at least for us. But it's we gonna got be this. fun. We got this. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> As we take a look, now the, 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 just before you get going, let me say that the, the the message out of the Rams locker room is Simpa Gumby, always flexible, <laughs> always flexible. <laughs> so I. I'm sure that our, the boys in green are going to be ready, clock or no clock, to ha do what they need to do. As it was a close game last time, but already we see Marshall coming in. Bailey Marshall, one of the big stars for this Arizona side. He wasn't able to produce anything as far as a goal or assist last night, which I'm sure was a little bit of a deviation from expectations as he has eight goals and eight assists for his team, and they had only played seven games as of yesterday. So now being eight games in, he's got one goal and one assist averaging per game. So we'll see how he performs tonight for this Arizona side. Right now the Rams just trying to get it out of their own zone. Another change you might see on the Rams roster, they see Joe Morgan back in between the posts as McDonald was, Avery McDonald was the one in net for the Rams last night. And was announced in tonight's lineup. Well, I, he, he played very well, and I think the Rams were happy to have him. And But as of tonight, Joe Morgan is back in between the posts, and we're going to see how he stacks up after having a little bit of rest. Right now, the puck being played along the boards. Arizona looking to set something up. This one shot coming from the blue line, gets deflected and knocked out of play. Shot coming from Matthew Hole on that one. As we get ready for the face-off to take place in the Rams zone, I'm sure the Rams are coming back into this game with a little bit of heart for vengeance as they want to get that they want to get that game back after taking another loss here in their home building last night. Looks like they're going to be moving the face-off out to the neutral zone here. Give uh, Morgan a little bit of breathing room. This one now coming across the blue line, and that's Laguerre trying to send it in. This one being played around now and. Rams trying to set up an offensive play. Arizona able to take the puck back, being raced down the other way. Carly James tried to make something of it for that Arizona side. This one now being handled by the Wildcat defenseman, now carried through center ice. Backhanded towards the back wall, but Rams able to get in the way of that one, still being passed around. Raymond Rowe trying to set something up for the Wildcats. Now, Cote gonna knock it around for the Rams. See both 22s on the teams going for that one. This one going across to Morgan. He's going to cover that one up. And you, if you take a look at the Wildcats end too, they also have a, a goaltender change. You see... Nolan Bivolkic, Bivolcic, 
I apologize if I'm butchering that name. <laughs> this one now being worked in the Rams zone. Noah Miller going for this one behind his own net. This one now coming across. Joseph sends it out to center ice now. That's Grayson North trying to lead it in. Millar now going after it for the Rams. Puck being played near the boards. Wildcats just trying to get it out. That is Camden Armstrong trying to work it out. Rams able to shut that opportunity down. Coming along the boards again. Able to take the puck away. Joseph might have a chance here. Gets tangled up. This one knocked towards the net and it's covered up for another faceoff. See Tanner Gillis in the faceoff circle for the Rams. Shot coming off the faceoff, but blocked by traffic. And now the Wildcats trying to take it down the other way. This one headed across. Casaria now trying to find some options. Passes it across. That was Tyler Nelson trying to set something up. Morgan going to hand it off to Moreno. Now being played near the boards behind the net, coming around towards the blue line. Moreno just trying to knock it out of the zone. Nelson to Casaria, back to Nelson. A little back and forth action there. Coming the long pass. Tried to get it to Moreno, but not able to get the deflection of it. And that's going to be an icing call. And Arizona, with their win last night, that improved their road record to 5-1. and one. So... Whether they're playing at home or away, they are able to handle any situation just fine. Being 7-1, shot coming, and that's in the back of the net for a score. And the early goal coming for Arizona. I believe that's scored by number 15, Anthony Cusinelli. He was a huge asset for that Wildcat side last night. And he's surely coming through already today. This puck now being worked towards the Rams end again. We're going to see who was a part of that last goal. Arizona goal is scored by number 15, Anthony Cusinelli, with the assist to number 11, Bailey Marshall. Cusinelli from Marshall, Wildcats goal at 324. So just a few minutes into the game and the Wildcats take the lead and Anthony Cusinelli was the goal scorer for the Wildcats with the assist coming from Bailey Marshall who we were just discussing at the beginning of the game, wondering if he was gonna contribute to this offensive attack and here he is coming away with an assist already too. Put his number up to nine assists. So I'm estimating just about 16 minutes left to go in the period with the Wildcats being up 1-0 now. And it looks like we've got a whistle. It looks like we're gonna get a face off right outside the Rams defensive end. This puck won by the Rams off the face off. Now they're gonna try and set up their own offensive play. Joseph trying to get his stick on that, but it gets by him. This puck being played along the boards coming out to center. Still across the blue line. Rams trying to get it out and they do. Wildcats trying to adjust. This one dumped in towards the back wall. Morgan coming out to play it on his stick. Let's Noah Miller take a pass with it. Now North has it on his. Trying to work it out from behind his own net. Facing some pressure, intercepted pass, and now Wildcats take possession of it after the turnover. This one trying to get dumped down. They get the deflection, so no icing call. Morgan tries to knock it around the boards. Just trying to get the pass off. This is... C.J. Nitchin coming across the center, tried to knock it towards the net, but not able to get it on target. 
Liam Millar working from out of the corner. Gets it to Joseph. Joseph facing some pressure. He's going to lose his footing. Pass coming towards center. Shot, but it was a soft one. He easily handled by this Wildcats defense. Tyler Nelson retrieving the puck at center ice. Nitchin just giving an extra knock. Millar dumping it towards the back wall while the Rams go for a line change. And now Arizona has a chance to set up an offensive play. Looks like they lose the puck and give it back to the Rams now. And off the line change, the Rams are going to try and set something up going the other way. We saw a lot of that back and forth hockey. Cote, backhander towards the net. That one gets deflected. Goes off the glass. Puck now in the corner. And you see Max Laguerre trying to hold on to the puck. Puck tips and into the Wildcats bench. And we're going to get ready for another faceoff. So far, Nolan Bivolcic able to handle these shots well. Coming from the Rams' end. And again, we saw a lot of that back and forth hockey last night. We're going to see if we see that same type of play tonight in this rematch between these two teams. This one being worked across towards the blue line. Shot coming. Morgan has the bouncing puck in front of him, but Kyle Nelson's there to help him out and take it away. This one now coming through the left side. Rutschley handed it off to Gillis, and now Gillis dumping it back. Rams trading the puck back and forth between each other. Back to Thrutchley. Thrutchley looking for options. Try to get it by. Has it deflected. Now has a shot coming towards the net. Rebound shot looking for it. Gillis gets tied up a little bit. Bivolcic out of his net for just a second. And it looks like we've got a broken stick out there. This one now coming across. Moreno with a bouncing shot. Rebound, rebound. This puck gets knocked behind. No goal scored. Action still coming. Pass towards the center. Corey Taylor looking to set something up for his ramp side. Wildcats able to get a stick on it, and they finally knock it out of the zone, giving them a breather. Rams looking to take advantage, but the offsides call. Is, looks like Kyle Nelson was a little bit eager there to get across that blue line with the puck. So quite a few opportunities the Rams just had there, but not able to put it in the back of the net. Bailey Marshall back in the faceoff circle for the Wildcats and Kyle Riley for the Rams to face it. But this one's coming the other way now. One-on-one -on -one opportunity, backhander, and just sends it right into Morgan's glove, and he handles that break, mini breakaway with the same confidence we always expect from him. So a big save coming from Morgan. He's going to lead the puck to be a face-off. <laughs> in this Rams defensive end, puck bouncing around in the face-off circle. C.J. Nitchin going for that one for the Rams side. Passed across. Wildcats looking to set something up. To Jones at the top line. Passing it to the right side. Morgan with another save. Looking for the rebound, but not able to get it. This one back towards the blue line again. Wildcats might... Have Rams penalty is on number four, Noah Miller. Two minutes for hooking. Miller, two minutes for hooking. Colorado State penalty at 7.15. This one bouncing clock. We just heard that penalty called out and Morgan able to reach up for that one and hold it. So this is gonna be the first power play opportunity for the Time Wildcats wise. tonight. Sometimes the mic stays hot a few seconds too long. <laughs> so the Wildcats looking to take advantage of the power play opportunity. We didn't see a lot of power play chances last night. But tonight's story might be a little bit different. Wildcats working from this left side near the blue line now passed across. This one coming from the right side, pass across again, shot coming, that one. Big shot going wide. This one now being worked on the right side again by Langlar. Passes it towards the blue line to Rowe, passes it to his left. Back to Rowe, he's looking for options, passes the left side and a 
almost a fake shot that turned into a pass, but this one goes awry and out of the zone. And now the Rams, that's Cote looking to rush after that one. Rams only hoping that that power play is coming to an end soon. Cote just trying to kill a few more seconds off the clock. Going to knock it off the boards and knock it out of the zone. We just heard the call out. 30 seconds left in the power play. And this one able to get deflected by Anse. He's going to hurry off for a line change after getting an extra stick on the puck. This one coming to the right side. Marshall has a chance on this right side, looking to take it towards the middle. Pass across, but Mil Millar is able to get his stick on it. And now the Rams taking it the other way. Final seconds counting down on the power play. Nitchin now behind the net, pass towards the center, but no Ram able to capitalize on it. And now this is a chance coming for the Wildcats away. Marshall with a shot and a big save from Morgan. This one now near the boards. Rams looking to carry it out. That's Riley on his stick, carrying it through the center. Able to get around one, carrying it towards the center. Shot towards the Volchich, and he handles it well. This one now coming out towards center ice. And Thrutchley almost lost the puck there. Had it stolen away from him. Puck still being battled for near the center. Rams just trying to dump it into the Wildcat zone. While the Wildcats just trying to maintain possession. Just heard about 10 minutes left to go in the period. And Thrutchley going after this one for the Rams. He's going to get there first, but he is going to go down along the boards, and it looks like he might have taken a small hit to the face, but he's getting up all right. And this one passed towards the right side. That was now the Wildcats going to set something up. Looking for a five-man opportunity here with speed coming down this right side. This might be an opportunity, but Rams able to get their stick on that. Rams now looking to take it down the other way. Dumping it towards the back is Laguerre. Laguerre passing it around to Cote behind the net. Looking for options. And give this one to Caseri at the blue line. Caseri with a shot and deflected by traffic, but bouncing puck looking to cover it up is with Volchers, but this one's still going around. Rams have it on their sticks again. This puck hits the official as Laguerre was trying to knock it around. Tries for it again, this time gets it around. Cote looking to make his presence known on that one. Wildcats trying to get a handle on that puck, and they do. This one soaring through the air. Didn't hit the ceiling, no whistle blown by the referee. This man might be a chance, shot coming. That one deflected off Casaria. This one now coming towards the blue line, Rowe with a chance. Rowe's gonna knock it behind, looking for options. That's Westland who hits it back towards the blue line, back to Rowe at the blue line. Tried to get the shot off, has it deflected. Looks like Gillis lost his stick and now he's trying to adapt. This one carried through the center. And this one, and we've got another score. It looks like there was a little bit of confusion as to what was going on from the Rams side. And the Wildcats take advantage and put another one in the back of the net. They're going to jump out to a two to nothing lead here over the Rams. Still in the first period, but we don't exactly know how much left in the first period because the public scoreboard is <laughs> not functioning tonight. Which if it's gonna break down, I'm glad it broke down on game eight <laughs> of an eight game streak instead of game one. But I know the folks here at Epic will have that repaired just as soon as they can. In fact, my understanding that the manager has already taken it off some somewhere off site to try to get it repaired. That's some quick acting. Another face off to come. Rams looking to carry it out of their own zone and they with all their effort just can't seem to get it by this wildcat defense. This one now being worked along the boards. Rams trying to set something up as they now are down two in this first period. Although we did see a similar situation where the Rams were down two. They scored back-to-back -back goals, but trying to get that goal back, they pulled 
McDonald last night, and that led to the open net goal, but that was late in the game, so still early. The Rams have a chance to come back, but also still opportunities for the Wildcats to put more pucks in the back of the net. This one now works from center ice towards the corner of this Rams defensive end. That's Taylor, able to maintain his footing. But it looks like we've got a whistle, and we are going to have a penalty. Seven oh five, Mark just announced. And with seven oh five remaining in the period, we're going to see Peter Meyer heading into the penalty box for Arizona. So this is going to be the first power play opportunity for the Rams tonight. And we're going to see how they stack up as they are only 11.8% successful on their power play. This one now being worked towards center ice. Cote looking to set something up but loses the puck a little bit. Nelson going to pass it across to Thrutchley. Thrutchley going to dump that one around. We see a lot of that sort of dump and chase opportunities being set up. This one across to Riley. Riley with a shot trying to get it through traffic. Bounces across. Our traffic looks like we've got a wildcat slow to get up, and we that's going to be he's trying to he's trying to get off the ice. He is not doing well. We can only hope he's okay, but the Rams just still try to set up a play. Cote on this right side, passing it, trying to get it back to Nelson. This one across to Casaria. Towards the center, backhander towards the net. Another save coming through. Cote trying to get it around. Wildcats intercept that one. This one pass towards the blue line again. Caseri tried to get the bounce pass. Lucky bounce. Another shot coming, deflecting puck. And it's another save from Bivolcic. So the clock ticking down on the power play. There is a certain amount of time left yes. on said power play. <laughs> yes. 45 seconds, we just heard it. <laughs> As if he heard our question. <laughs> the backhander towards the net, that one goes wide. This one goes up and out of play. We're gonna get ready for another face off. And we're not sure we're not sure what player went down. I believe that might have been Keelan Olnick, who was also a big helping hand to the Wildcat side last night. So again, we hope he's okay. And we hope to see him back out on the ice as soon as possible. Final seconds ticking down on the power play as the Rams not able to get a handle on it and set up a play. Not able to keep it in the zone. This one now going the other way. This one might be a chance for the Wildcats coming through. Shot coming, that one goes wide. Final 10 seconds of the power play, but the Wildcats almost making it seem like they're on the offensive attack. And this one trying to get dumped in, but looks like we're gonna get a whistle. So now back to even strength, both power play opportunities unsuccessful. Uh -oh. This place will have to come just outside the Wildcat zone. Looks like the Rams just trying to get organized on who they want on the ice. Liam Millar to take the face off for the Rams and Peter Meyer to take the face off for Arizona and Wildcats win that one. This one carried off the right side, trying to get dumped towards the back wall. Miller's gonna get there first. He's gonna try to get this one to Nitchin. And an official going down. He gets up quickly though. He seems to be all right. This one now being worked at center ice. This one bouncing off. This one might be a chance for the Rams. Backhander towards Bivolcic, bouncing puck, trying to get the rebound of the Rams. 
not able to get a handle on their sticks. Wildcats are scrambling to get it out of the zone. Miller able to keep it in at the blue line. This one shot scores! And the Rams get one back. Noah Miller coming through for the Rams offense. Putting this game back within one. Well, that'll bring some confidence back to the boys. After having two goals scored against them, they get one back before this first period comes to a close, and I'm sure the Rams coaching staff is happy about that one. With the assist to number 19, Axel Campbell. Miller from Campbell, Rams goal at 15-34. And this one now behind the Rams net, and you heard that goal scored by Noah Miller. This one coming across, shot and a big save from Morgan. Wildcats looking for the rebound. Rowe has it near the blue line. He's looking to dump this one behind the net. Thrutchley not willing to give it up without a fight. This one still being worked. Around the net, Rams looking to set something up. But that goal scored by Noah Miller, assisted by Axel Campbell for the Rams side, a relatively new face on the ice out there. And as soon as he comes out, he's already producing for the team. So I'm sure the team and the coaches are happy with that. This one now being worked towards center ice. Anse has it on his stick. We saw a lot of his speed last night as it led to one of the goals being scored, but Marshall able to intercept that one, and he's showing some of his athletic ability, but has the puck taken away from him. Big slam coming along the boards. Casario loses his stick in the process, and it looks like he's a little bit banged up, and he's going to head off the ice. Just got the two-minute call, or two-minute warning, I should say. That's football. <laughs> Hey, it'll work with this situation as well. <laughs> and say, with a shot, that one goes over the net. This one jumped out, and we're going to get an icing call. Two minutes, 36 seconds to go in the period. If I'm understanding the announcement correctly. Sounds like Mark is a little hoarse tonight, so he's... <laughs> Another face-off to come in this Wildcats defensive end. Rams looking to see if they can put another one up on the board as Miller knocks that one around. Marshall, who had a, a possible opportunity on that offensive attack, able this one bouncing in front of the net, but Wildcats still have possession. Miller going for this one, able to take his time with it as the Wildcats make a change north. Knocking it across, but Rams lose possession of that puck. But they get it right back at center ice. North again has it on his take. Pass towards the center. Moreno having one Wildcat on him. And we just heard that two-minute call. And a big shove coming from Nelson. As that Wildcat loses his stick. And now Nelson working with the puck. Gives it to North. North on the left side near the board. Gets the shot towards the net. And it's a big save from Kovacic. Able to handle it just fine. A minute 46 left on the clock here for this first period. Rams are trailing by one. But the good news is the faceoff is going to be down in Arizona's zone. See Liam Millar to take that faceoff for the Rams. And a slap shot coming from Thrutchley. Deflected and out of play. We'll get ready for another faceoff. Official losing his footing again as he's trying to get back in position. Rams trying to set something up near the corner. Gets dumped around the back end. Nitchin working on his stick, passing it back. 
Corey Taylor tried to get a shot off through traffic, but deflected. This one coming near the blue line again, and it gets knocked out of the zone, and Thrutchley trying to dump it back in, but this one might be a chance going the other way now. Thrutchley able to knock his stick on the puck and put a dent in that attacking play. And now Rams going to go for a line change as they try to dump it in. Taylor has it on his stick for the Rams. Gives it to Joseph. Joseph almost losing the puck there. This one still trying to be knocked out of the Rams zone. That's Taylor knocking it back towards center ice. Rowe has it on his stick, but Cote trying to take it away. And it's just bouncing back and forth between both teams. Now coming down the right side, shot coming. That one goes wide. I believe deflected off Morgan. One back to Rowe at center ice. Rowe dumping it in towards the back wall. Tyler Nelson going for this one. 30 seconds left to go in the period. Wildcats looking to see if they can add another tally up onto the board before this first period comes to a close. This one being worked around. Pass towards the center, but no Wildcat able to retrieve it. Casaria now carrying it through the center. 15 seconds left. Might see a little burst of energy coming from the teams. Tyler Nelson tried to knock it in, but the final seconds ticking down in this first period. This one might be a chance. Cote tried to get the shot. Might get a rebound. No, he slips and falls. And with that, after one period of play, the Wildcats, after scoring two goals and the Rams getting one back, go head into the locker rooms. Arizona leading Colorado State two to one. When we come back, we'll have the second period of action for you. You're watching Colorado Sports TV. I'm Litos Castro. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Colorado Sports TV. And we've got the coverage here of the rematch between Colorado State University and the University of Arizona. If you're just now joining us, the Wildcats were able to get a two goal lead early in the first period, but then the Rams were able to answer back with one. So heading into this period, Wildcats lead the Rams two to one. And again, if you're just now joining us, we don't have the scoreboard up as there's a little bit of technical difficulties going on right now. So they have to announce out the time of the game left, any penalties in those times. So we're adapting as much as we can here. And we have put a logo bug up onto the screen, so you're able to keep track of the score and what period we're in, but unfortunately we don't have the ability to show you the clock. So we're gonna adapt the best we can, but honestly in this regard, you're getting the same experience as the players because they don't know what the clock is until it's announced. We're, we're going old school today, folks. <laughs> Time clock and a book down in the officials box. <laughs> It's a unique broadcast here on Colorado Sports TV, but we thank you for tuning in. Litos is doing a great job on the mic. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, our normal color analyst had family obligations, so he is not here tonight. And you're stuck with me. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> They flipped Reynas, they flipped sides, <laughs> so now Lieutenant Morgan is over here in this net. Yes, yes, last year he was Ensign Morgan, but as he's moved up a year, he's ascended the ranks. By the time he's a senior, he'll be up to the captain's rank. <laughs> and face-off now. Wildcats winning the opening face-off at the second period, and we're getting this action underway. Again, Wildcats heading into this period with a 2-1 lead over the Rams. This one headed back for the icing call. First one of the period, and we're going to head back towards the Wildcat defensive end. There wasn't really a specific type of play or strategy we saw from either team. We saw a lot of the back and forth action that happened last night, and it appears that most of the opportunities develop for both teams from turnovers. So. From a coaching staff perspective, that's something you want to cut down from no matter what team you're on. Eliminate the turnovers, and you eliminate chances for the other team. I think the survival of the uh, strategy of tonight is survive. <laughs> uh, and I say this because it seems at the last second, it doesn't matter which team it is, but someone thinks they're going to pin their opponent up against the boards, 
They go to give him a good whack, and the guy slips out from under him, and he, they hit the boards alone. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a, and they're not being vicious by any means, but it, it's it's just it's a high-paced period so far. I think we're seeing a lot of the aggression come out as we've seen two players, one from one from both team, excuse me, <laughs> one from each team, head off the ice, almost limping a little bit. So we hope all the players are okay that come into this game, but. As of now, a puck being played in the defensive end of the Rams. This one might be a chance. Coming off the left side, Wildcats looking to get a shot. That one bouncing through, a rebound shot, bouncing puck in front of Morgan. This one tipped up in the air now. Rams looking to get it out of their own zone. Morgan was able to keep three shots at bay on that drive. This one being worked from behind the net, tried to get the centering pass, but blocked by traffic. Now coming near the blue line. This one might be a chance for Anse. He had one like this last night. Can he do it again? Gets the shot. That one's bounced off of Volchic. And he handles it just fine. This one now. Into the Rams zone. This one might be a chance. Shot coming in. Morgan with a save. Bouncing puck right behind him. His teammate was there to cover his back and keep that one from sliding in the back of the net. Well, we're going to get the icing call. A big chance from the Wildcats, and luckily the Rams were able to hold on. Eighteen oh five left to go in the period. No goals scored so far in this second period. Not as many penalties as well, uh, like we saw last night. Only two penalties have been called. Oh, now players. you've done it. <laughs> now you've jinxed it. <laughs> The girls were warm down there in the penalty boxes, but now you're going to make them work. <laughs> Get out from under their parkas. <laughs> this one being worked towards center ice. Riley trying to get a get away from the Wildcats here as he was getting held down a little bit. And now this one now being worked out of the Wildcat zone. Carried through center ice towards this right end. Handed off, shot coming. Morgan deflects this one wide. This one now coming the other way. Three on two chance for the Rams. Gillis looking to set something up, hands it off to Nelson, tries to get it back to Gillis, but Wildcats able to get their sticks on that. Back to center ice. Tyler Nelson now, handing it off to Caseri on the left side, dumps it off to Moreno. Moreno's gonna tap that one in. Gillis is gonna go after that one. Tossed around by Olnick. Glad to see him back on the ice after he had to limp off early in the first period. Glad to see he's okay. Puck now being held along the boards, Moreno Able to get a stick in there and drag it out, but the Wildcats now going to try and take this the other way. Across center ice. Carried by Kyle Wade on the left side. Tries to backhand it towards the net. Just gets knocked off the back wall. This one knocked towards Morgan off the post there. This one's bouncing puck in front. Morgan sliding across, looking for the potential shot coming through. Tyler Nelson able to get his stick in there. Passes it off to Gillis. Moreno racing for that one on the opposite side. He's going to take a shove from Rowe. Now Arizona taking it down the other way. Olnick again has it on his stick. Right side, carried across the blue line, towards behind the net, passing it back. Shot coming, that one goes wide of the net. This one now back behind the net again. Handled by Dawson Marshall. But Rams able to take it away, now they're trying to take it towards this Wildcat defensive end. Looking to make something happen was Cote, but he gets knocked off the puck. Engel was able to get his stick on it for just a sec, but it's headed back into the Rams defensive end. Thratchley hands it off to Riley. And Cote trying to get his stick on it again. And a shot towards Vivolcic, and that one goes over the net. Nothing for him to worry about. And he tried to get another shot, but deflected. And now Wildcats taking it down the other way. Dawson Marshall again hands it off to the other Marshall on the team, Bailey Marshall. Both Marshalls out on the ice. Arizona, we see the similar problem. Morgan with a save. We see that similar problem when both the Nelsons are out on the ice for the Rams. And of course, same situation. They're both one number apart on both teams. So with 15-24 left to go in this second period, face off to come in the Rams zone. I thought he said 13. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. 
I was never good at math. This one now being worked from behind the net. Wildcats looking to set up an opportunity. Looks like we got a Wildcat down as the Rams carrying it out of their zone. That is Cusinelli who has one goal to his name already. Heading slowly off the ice there. He's going to have to take a breather, it looks like. Yeah, you were right. We just get the 15 minute and remaining in the period announcement. Did you doubt me? <laughs> no, I didn't. Not really. Only a little. <laughs> no, actually, not even a little, because I don't. Mark's uh, voice is getting gravelly enough. I'm having trouble <laughs> hearing him. So I doubt me. <laughs> not you. <laughs> Casaria knocks this one back towards the back wall. Riley going after that one, trying to get his stick on it. And Tipton out of play. Well, that'll break up the momentum for a second while the, and give the Rams hopefully an opportunity to capitalize on this face off down in the Wildcats offense or defensive zone. That shot looked to have bounced off Ante. And that's going to lead to another faceoff. Yeah, he tried to launch that one up into Windsor. He just he got that <laughs> airborne on that one. Riley looks like he's going to get tossed out of the faceoff circle, and Ansay is going to come in for him. Ansay trying to knock it towards the net off the faceoff. It goes wide. Wildcats looking to take advantage now and toss it down to center ice. Casaria. Able to work it around. Try to get it towards Ansay again, but intercepted. Riley again trying to hand it off to Ansay on this left side. Ansay with a chance. Backhander. That one goes away of the net. Casaria now has it in his own end. Going to try to get the dump down. Riley racing for that one. No icing call. It seems like that's what the Arizona side was looking for. We see Jonathan Johnson back out on the ice for the Rams side. And Corey Taylor. Handling on his stick, he tried to pass across. A couple deflections there, but he got it to where he wanted it to be. This one being worked around. Anse still out on the ice for the Rams. Riley taking a shove as he knocks it back around. This one coming behind the net. Moreno looking for an option. Looks like he loses his footing there for just a sec. Riley tried to find an option, but it gets deflected and out of the zone. Rams have to reset their strategy. Dump towards the back wall again. Nelson going for this one. Moreno trying to support Nelson along the board. You see Camden Armstrong and Peter Meyer trying to physically take that puck back away from the Rams. And Taylor faking a shot and it was almost able to get the fake shot coming across and that one goes wide of the net and off the boards. Now Wildcats taking it down the other way. They're going to just dump this one in off the back wall as the Wildcats go for a line change. Luckily, their bench is right next to this Rams end. Try to get the quick change, but Puck is knocked out of play. 13 minutes remaining in the period. Now it's 13. Now it's 13. <laughs> And this puck now being handled by the Wildcats as they look to set up an offensive opportunity. Being handled behind the net, North tries to take it back, but it's knocked towards the blue line. Rowe has it again, tries to get the shot, bounces off Morgan, goes wide. Wildcats still trying to maintain possession, but the Rams able to take it back. Now they're heading down the other way. That's Angle trying to race after it, but Olnick is there. He's gonna lose his footing and go crashing into the boards. He gets up from that one though. Luckily he's okay, but a shove coming from behind and he is Olnick is not happy with that hit as he was getting some hits on Engel from behind. But we also see another Wildcat down at center ice. That is Charlie James, number 23, and he is slow to get up, and he does not, he doesn't look okay. Looks like he's trying to. Uh, here comes the doc. Got a Ram player escorting the doctor out to check on the Wildcat, who is now up on his skates. He, 
See Casaria and Dawson Marshall trying to help him off on his own power. He is slowly skating off the ice. We hope he's okay. The doctor is going to walk with him and he'll get checked out. And while that was going on, we saw one of the other Wildcats, number 23, I believe, get escorted off the ice. 20 24, that was Olnick. 24? Who was, who was shoving Angle in the back after he went that's, crashing into the board. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Hitting him in the back of the head with his stick is another way of saying it. But, you know, either way, it was... Uh, there's a little <laughs> bit too much physical altercations for the Zebra's liking, so he was escorted to the locker room. He'll be watching the rest of this game from the stands. The official sorting out what the situation is going to be. Might be a possible... Looks like we see the penalty box door open for the Arizona side. Officials didn't have any problem with Angle's contact on Olnick. But as soon as Olnick started what appeared to be retaliation, that and penalty how he, how he chose to do it was really probably the more of the issue than that he chose to do it. And then hopefully we'll get word on number 23 who was injured. You see, the, I'm getting them. The, the injured player and the ejected player were one number off. Yeah. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of those one number problems. So I'm um, <laughs> getting my numbers a little confused here. Sorry about that, folks. But so We're going to get back underway here down in the Rams' offensive zone. And I'm stepping on your lead. <laughs> no, you're fine. We see, <laughs> we see only four Wildcats out on the ice. So looks like the Rams are going to get a power play. We're going to see how long that power play is. And for <coughs> what the official penalty call. Here we go. The Arizona penalty is on number 24, Keelan Olnick. The five minute major for cross checking and a game disqualification. Olnick, five minute major for cross checking and a disqualification. Serving the five minute major for the Wildcats is number 29, Kyle Wade. So as we just heard, it's a five minute major penalty. It's a five minute major penalty being assessed to the Wildcats side and Kyle Wade, number 29 for Arizona is serving that penalty. This is gonna be a big chance for the Rams to try and capitalize on this big power play. And this one coming across might be a shorthanded chance off oh, the post. The and post. just got, going wide. That is. Rams got so lucky on that one. That is a sigh of relief that I'm sure the Rams are just now breathing. But Rams trying to get organized, but they, they can't afford to give up this opportunity. But it looks like we've got another penalty arm going up. As we just heard about four minutes left to go in the five minute major. And but this time it's against the Rams. That's Riley heading into the box. That makes sense. I mean, he does have a timeshare there this year. It feels like he has to meet a quota in, the, in well, there. You want to get your money's worth when you get a timeshare. <laughs> so now two minutes of that five-minute major is going to be cut off. So with just under four minutes left to go in the major, Two of that is going to be taken down for four on four hockey. Let's see how both teams handle that shot coming from the blue line, but we've got another whistle blown as looks like that one's going to be offsides. Well, the Zebras are going to be watching tempers at this point. They want to make sure that there's no more retaliation and all that nonsense is over with. The players know each other from play after last night's game, and although there wasn't a lot of while there was, you know, the physical aggression along the boards, there wasn't a lot of at least physical penalties that we saw last night. So this no. is a, it's a different kind of environment that these two teams are creating in this rematch. This one now being carried the other way, a possible chance for the Rams. Ante, shot coming, that one goes wide. Now near the blue line, Miller, who has one goal already, works it around. Wildcats trying to get it out, but tipped. 
And now carried the other way. This one might be a chance. Miller trying to cut it off, and he does. But we've got another whistle. Looks like that one. See, you jinxed it. <laughs> Ten minutes ago, you said we'd had a clean game and not a lot of whistle time. And uh-huh. It's always in the second period. It's always in the <laughs> I second. I got to wait for the second period to go by. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Every game. That's all right. That's why it's hockey. <laughs> so it looks like, based off an offside's call, the faceoff coming just outside the Rams' defensive end. Rams able to win that one. Tyler Nelson has it on his stick. Taylor with a soft pass. This one's going to go awry, trying to get the chance off it. Yeah, but was, he makes good on his on it by busting up that slap shot attempt. That was Cusinelli who had an opportunity but not able to capitalize. And I'm sure they don't want to give that puck back to him as he has shown to be a big shot taker. And in this game, he already has one goal scored. This one deflected and out of play. And the net even comes off balance, so they'll have to get that situation fixed up. Still four on four hockey is Kyle Riley waiting to get out of the box. So the Rams can continue their power play opportunity. Face off coming in the Rams zone. This one gets knocked towards the boards. Wildcats trying to take a, advantage of the four on four hockey before they have to go back on the penalty kill. Taylor. Backhands it towards Nelson, both 13s going for that one. That's Matthew Hole and Kyle Nelson being tangled up along the boards now. Coche tried to get his stick on it, passed across now, possible shot coming, and Morgan's gonna cover that one up in his chest. Shot coming from Ben Jones on the left side. Both teams going for a line change as we get ready for this next faceoff. one now. Face off being taken by Austin and save for the Rams side. This one shot coming and Morgan with another save off the pad. Now being worked towards the Wildcat defensive end. Joseph going for this one as he has Armstrong to contest him along the wall. Now being taken away by Langelar. He's going to pass that one across. And now the penalty's over, but shot coming, looking for the rebound opportunity. Morgan trying to get back to his feet. But the penalty over for the Rams, and they're back on the power play. Nonetheless, Wildcats still applying pressure. Another shot bouncing off Morgan. Riley back on the ice. Now trying to set up an offensive attack. This one worked by Anse. He's going to dump this one around, hitting the back wall. Casaria not able to get it on his stick for the Rams, and Riley gets... Push from behind, we see the penalty arm going up again for the, for the officials. And this might be another penalty on the Wildcats. Well, it looks like you're right. The Wildcat door has opened. So Number 17 has gone in. Oh, That's going to be Ben Jones for that Wildcat side. So with 8.08 left to go in the period, the Rams are now going to have a five on three opportunity. And if you're on this Rams coaching staff, you are needing your players to come through with at least one goal here to t at least tie it up with this big power play opportunity. The, the Wildcats don't give up many opportunities like this. This one now being worked at the blue line. Taylor passing to Casaria. Casaria looking for options. Back to Taylor again. Taylor passing it towards the left side here. Back to Taylor again. A little back and forth action. Nelson with a shot. That one's off the post. No goal. Arizona penalty is on number 17, Ben Jones. Minute two minutes first. for cross checking. Jones, this two minutes bouncing for cross checking. Wild Arizona penalty. able to knock that one out. 8.48. A big chance off the shot from Nelson just off the post and goes out wide. Taylor now. Working with Nelson again. Getting closer, inching closer and closer to the net. 
Cote in the corner, looking for options. Taylor, shot coming, trying to get it through traffic, bouncing puck, but Bivolcic covers that one up and the officials have to hurry in as they're just trying to de-escalate the tension as much as they can. Another face-off to come in the Wildcat zone as Tanner Gillis is the one to take the face-off for the Rams. This one now being worked across again, North. Going to hand it off to Joseph, back to North. Hand it off to Miller, who has one goal already for the Rams. Keep an eye on him. Back to Miller, near the blue line. Coming across. Shot coming from Ante, looking for the rebound, just scores! The Rams cleaning up in front of the net to tie it up. Well, they had the five on three opportunity. That is Ben Joseph coming away with the second goal for the team. And that'll knock one penalty off the board for Arizona, but they still have four. They, stick, they still can only put four men on, out on the ice as they still have one power play left to serve the time for. Noah Miller going back for this one as Wildcats trying to kill some more time off the clock, but that penalty only had a few more seconds left on it, and so now it's back to five on five hockey. So that goal came from Ben Joseph, assisted by Tanner Gillis and Austin Anse to make it tied up at two. Ben Joseph now and Austin Anse trying to work it around. Anse crashing into the boards. He's going to get up just fine, though. We're starting to keep an eye out for more injuries. These players seem to be going down just a little more. This puck being worked at center ice. Wildcats looking to respond to those two goals. If I heard it correctly, I believe just about a little over six minutes left to go in this I second I think period. that's what he said, yeah. His voice is starting to go. Face off now to come in the Wildcats defensive end. Rams trying to get a handle on it. That's Nitchin. Trying to get the shot from the side. That one gets bounced back towards the boards. Now Wildcats looking to send this one out towards center ice, but it looks like there was a deflection able to be taken, so no icing call there. Rams trying to take possession. A shot coming. That one went across the crease, but no danger for Morgan. Being worked around again, coming back towards the blue line near the boards. That's Armstrong, number eight for the Wildcats, who's trying to get involved on that play. And there he is again at center ice. Gonna dump it back off the glass into the zone. And we have the offsides calls. Looks like Bailey Marshall was a little eager to getting over that line. Five thirty-seven left to go in this second period. One goal scored this period, and that was for the Rams as they tied it back up at two. After in the first period, Wildcats were able to get two good goals against the Rams. And you see Peter Meyer racing for that one trying to set up a play and keep the offensive attack alive for the Wildcats. Puck now being played in the corner along the board. 
Players getting tangled up, battling for the puck. This one now finally coming out from the boards and the Wildcats able to keep it in. That was Kyle Wade able to backhand it towards the corner and now players tangled up again wrestling for the puck. This one shot coming, that one goes wide of the net. Five minutes left to go in the period. Cote had it on his stick for just a moment. Tried to get the, tried to get his stick on it. Bouncing puck, shot coming from the center, blocked by traffic. Now coming around, trying to center it, but just gets by. Now being played along the blue line. This one, again, shot blocked by traffic, but we've got a whistle. Looks like we're gonna have a penalty. Like, looks like this is going to be a penalty on the Rams. I believe that is Noah Miller heading into the box for the Rams side who has one of the goals scored for his team. So I'm sure the Rams are going to have to adjust without him out on the ice. <coughs> As the Wildcats now have another power play opportunity to respond to the five on three chance that the Rams had. See Liam Millar getting tossed out of the circle. Nitchin going to Come in to replace him as Bailey Marshall is on the other side. Rams penalty is on number four, Noah Miller. Shot coming from the blue line. To two block minutes by Travis. for interference. Miller, two minutes for interference. Colorado State penalty at 15-24. Have the whistle blown. The lead for the icing call. And face off now coming back into the Rams end. Face off, one by the Wildcats as it comes out to the blue line, passed across, shot coming, and blocked by traffic again. That's Cusinelli at this blue line, loses a handle on it, and it comes back towards Bivolcic. Cusinelli again, handing it off this time. Back to Cusinelli on the right side, coming with speed, shot coming, that's a score! Well, they got Morgan on the glove side. And it looks like a little bit of words that the Rams were trying to get in there. But nonetheless, that's another goal scored for the Wildcats side, and they've increased the lead back three to two. And we were just talking about Cusinelli as he has a goal today. And so that's going to be his second of the night. So right before this second period coming to a close, the Wildcats not accepting the tie and they want to head back into the locker room with the lead still in their hands. like just waiting for Morgan to get situated as he had to adjust some of his gear before they got back on with the play. Face off at center ice. This one being worked around now. Arizona power play goal is scored by number 15, Anthony Cusinelli, with the assist to number 11, Bailey Marshall, and the goaltender, number 35, Nolan Vivelsic. Cusinelli from Marshall and Vivelsic. Wildcats power play goal at 16.02. Three twenty-one left to go in the period, I'm hearing. So as we take a look at who helped out in that last goal, Anthony Cusinelli, the one to score it with his second goal of the night, and Bailey Marshall getting another assist, helping out Cusinelli. So that's his second assist of the night, and also an assist going to, and it's, excuse me, his name is Nolan Bivolsic. Bivolsic, it's a very 
It's a nice name. I like it. I'm starting to wonder if Arizona went on a recruiting trip to the Soviet bloc or something. <laughs> well, not literally Soviet anymore, but, you know, Eastern Europe or something. <laughs> Well, with that goal scored, again, the Wildcats now have the lead 3-2 to two as this puck is being played in the Wildcat defensive end. Rams trying to maintain an offensive presence as players getting tangled up along the boards. We're seeing a lot of that tonight. Now it's headed out towards center ice. Gillis trying to knock it back. Another big shove coming from Moreno. Morgan trying to play it on his stick and hands it off to Casaria. Casaria able to shake off one man. He's coming at center ice again, trying to carry it into the zone. But the Wildcats are it. all over the puck holder. It doesn't matter. They're just swarming who's ever got the puck. And that actually causes a lot of distress for the Rams as we see it lead to turnovers, which causes a lot of the opportunities that the Wildcats have been able to have. And we saw that on Thursday when they played Arizona State as the Rams couldn't handle a lot of the pressure. Shot coming from Millar, and Lavolsic covers that up. And it looks like we may have a penalty. Well, the refs saw something they didn't like, and they're talking with the Wildcats about it. So we see Ben Jones heading into the penalty box. So there's gonna be another power play opportunity for the Rams. The Rams scoring on their last one. And the Wildcats scoring on their last power play opportunity. So now the Rams looking to get a second power play goal and possibly tying it up again before the second period comes to a close. Bouncing puck off the Jones, two minutes for slashing. Jones, two minutes for slashing. Arizona penalty at 18.06. So if the Rams don't score on this one, they're going to head into the... They're going to head into the third period with just a few seconds left to go on the power play. I've done my math right. I think you're right. <coughs> <coughs> now Casaria working the puck in his own end as the Rams trying to set something up with the power play opportunity that they have. Three, two, one. Riley one carrying it through the center. remaining in the period. We just heard the one minute call. One being worked around, shot coming from Casaria. That one goes wide off the back wall. Anson passing it back across to Casaria again. Casaria back to Anson, but we've got a whistle blown. It looks like you know, if we think the broadcast tonight is unique for us up here working without a clock, my hat's really is off to the officials down there in the official box dealing with all of this. They're going above and beyond to try to get this all organized the best they can. As Riley goes back into the box. And he is not happy about it. And it appears the home crowd is not happy about that call either. Well, they could just be practicing their hoot owl. Oh, yeah. You know. My mistake. How could I have missed it? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> it is nearing hunting season. You know, so. So now the face off to come in the Rams defensive end as we get ready for some four-on-four -four action in the last minute here. Bouncing puck in the face off circle. Rams trying to get it out. That's Nelson carrying it around the left side, try to carry it through the center, gets tangled up. 30 seconds left to go in the period. This one passed across. This 
one now being worked on the right side by Marshall. Marshall trying to get an opportunity, but he gets knocked down. Puck being kicked towards the net, and now the player is searching for it, scrambling for the puck. This one being taken away. The final 10 seconds counting down. Might not be an opportunity for the Wildcats. As Moreno just going to hold on to that as Cusinelli tried to go after him. So after two periods of play, we head into the locker rooms with Arizona leading the the Rams, three to two. Couple goals scored, one apiece for both sides. As we head into the third period, there's gonna be still a couple penalties going on and we'll have all the fun third period action for you when we come back. You're watching Colorado Sports TV. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to this third period of action of hockey for you between Colorado State University and the University of Arizona. It's been a fun game so far. If you're just now joining us, court score is three to two. Arizona leading over Colorado State. Couple goals scored by Arizona in the first period. Then the Rams were able to answer back with one before the first period concluded. And then in the second period, we had a couple more goals scored. Rams tied it up on a five on three power play opportunity, but then Arizona had another power play chance that they were able to respond with and were able to get that lead back. And so that leads to the score being three to two now as we enter into this third period of play. And in the penalty box is one member from each team. So we're gonna start off with some four and four action. The Rams started off with the power play, but then had a penalty made against them, or excuse me, they, they committed a penalty. So they're gonna have the Arizona penalty to kill off once they get done being in the box there. You're watching Colorado Sports TV. I'm Leach's Couch here covering the action for you. We're about to get, get this third period underway. And so right as the period gets started, the Arizona penalty is up and now the Rams are on the penalty kill, but we see Kyle Riley inching to get out of the box. Another shot coming and a rebound chance. Just missing the net. The Wildcats trying to take advantage of the small time of the power play that they have. A Rams defenseman was able to deflect that second shot but since Morgan was out of position, hadn't been able to recover yet from the first. So the Rams got lucky there, but just like the start of the second period, in the third here, the, Ram the Wildcats are starting off with a lot of pressure. And we're seeing a lot of that being the story for both games yesterday and today. And so the Wildcats trying to set something up here, coming towards the slot here, and this one gets knocked towards the board. This one being worked around towards the backside, trying to get the centering pass, deflected off Tyler Nelson. And now Marshall's going to go to retrieve this one. Bailey Marshall passing it across. Jones handles it off. Marshall again with a shot. That one shot score. So the Wildcats are going to expand their lead to two early on here in the third. As the final seconds come to a close on the power play, Bailey Marshall able to put it in the back of the net to increase that lead. Well, I was hoping to see an early goal in the third, but not this way. <laughs> Wildcats, though, are they're earning these goals. They are proving why they are a tough team. Showing why that 7-1 and one record is no joke. And as we were talking about before this game got started, Bailey Marshall, who is a huge offensive asset for this team as he came into the game with eight goals, eight assists, and now two assists he has, and now a goal to add on to that tally. Arizona power play goal is scored by <clears throat> number 11, Bailey Marshall, with the assist to number 17, Ben Jones, and number 15, Anthony Cusinelli. Marshall from Jones and Cusinelli, Wildcats power play goal at 118. So as that puck bounces to the Vol 6 glove, we take a look at who helped out with that goal. So Bailey Marshall 
scoring the goal, putting it in the back of the net with the assist coming from Ben Jones and Anthony Cusinelli. And Cusinelli, who had two of the goals scored, now he flips the roll and he's adding an assist to his name as Bailey Marshall goes from assisting to being the goal scorer. So two of the big stars for this Arizona team tonight as the puck now being played along the boards in this Wildcat defensive end. Score now four to two after the early goal scored on the power play. This one being worked around. Askel Campbell on the ice for the Rams who had an assist though. One time he was out there looking to see if he can help out a little more. This one now being carried around. Noah Miller who has one goal for the Rams Hands it off to the gear. This one dumped towards the net. Cote gonna still try and apply some pressure for the ram side, but Wildcats able to handle it just fine. That was Jones working it out. Now he hands it off to Joshua Larson. And this one coming towards Morgan and he handles it fine. Officials. Discussing a few things with Westland and I believe Thrutchley before we get ready for this next face off. Face off to come in the Rams defensive end. Thrutchley trying to get a stick involved there. Able to cause a diversion and now Riley tried to carry it out but has this one knocked off his stick. Buck being played at center ice. Wildcats taking it a little deep into their own zone. Rowe. I'm gonna pass this one leading towards Westland. Morgan able to get a knock on it with his stick. This one coming towards the center. Now back at center ice. Anse trying to make his presence known with a little bit of a slap from his stick and Wildcats now holding it behind their own net as they go for a couple quick changes and now they're gonna try and set up a five man opportunity. Matthew Hole to lead the charge from behind the net. Gonna knock it off the board. Now the Rams trying to turn it around the other way. This puck being bounced back and forth between the teams. Millar able to get a handle on it and pass it towards Tyler Nelson. He's gonna pass that one off to Casaria. Casaria leading it off towards the left side. Joseph gonna tip it across the blue line as Nitchin tries to apply pressure, but now it's headed back out towards center ice. Casaria's gonna have to go for this one for the icing call. So just a little over 15 minutes left to go and the Rams are back in a situation where the clock is working against them. And the Wildcats are gonna look to hold on to this lead. As the Rams had a similar situation last night where they were one goal down, they tried to pull Avery McDonald in the last minute of play but led to the open net goal being scored and putting that game away. And again, folks, if you're just now joining us, there was a little bit of technical, diff technical difficulties going on with the score clock, the scoreboard here in Fort Collins. And so, unfortunately, we don't have the times being able to be shown. Shot coming from the blue line. And so... Yeah, we're tonight we're having to go old school. The, the non-skating officials are keeping the time and the book down in the in their box on the sideline, but we don't really have an easy way to show it. And what they've been doing is that. At the beginning of each face-off, they've just been announcing what the current clock is. Currently, 15.03 remaining in the third. Face-off to come in the Wildcats defensive end. You see Kyle Riley, who's spent a couple shifts in the penalty box. Tonight for the Rams. This one trying to be worked around. Thrutchley trying to get a shot off. It's going to get bounced. This is going to be a two-on-one opportunity as the Rams hurrying back to try and get some reinforcement. Shot coming. That one goes wide in the net. Anse hands it off to Thrutchley again. Thrutchley going to dump it in. See, he's going to get collided with as he's going to shove into row there as the puck was on the other side. Riley shot. That one goes wide in the net as well. Thrutchley again going to backhand it, try to dump it back in, but Marshall is there to intercept it. Anse trying to take it away. This one being worked near the post. And now he's carrying it around, looking for options. Trying to decide what he's going to do. Trying to carry towards the center. Trying to get the centering pass, but no one there for him. 
Rutchley again, dumping it off the wall. Marshall for Arizona is there. This one headed out to center ice. Riley has to pass this one back to Taylor. Over to Thrutchley, now to Anse. Anse going to knock that one off the wall, and Riley's going to hurry for that one, able to try and get a stick in there. But now Wildcats taking it down the other way. Uh, Rams intercepted now. They're going to try and set up another offensive play. This one knocked out of the zone and out of play. Thirteen forty-seven left to go in the period, and this faceoff will come just outside the Wildcats' defensive end. We see Pascal Campbell back on the ice for the Rams, as the coaches seem to be confident in putting him out there on the ice after the one assist he was able to acquire first in that first period. And Cote working off the left side, and it's knocked up and out of play again. Sure, the Rams are going to have a little bit of moti extra motivation on their side it is, as it is homecoming weekend for them and their other teams, the other Ram teams are putting up some wins, the football team and I believe the volleyball team as well coming away with wins tonight. So now, oh, pressure on the hockey team. <laughs> now they're looking to follow suit. And the baseball team unfortunately had to cancel their, hockey, their, uh, their charity event that was scheduled for tomorrow. They were going to be doing a golf charity event, but the snow that's coming in makes that a little bit difficult. It is starting to come down here in Fort Collins. As we just saw, there was an opportunity there for the Wildcats, but Morgan able to handle that shot well, and now we're going to get ready for another faceoff after the icing call. Well, this is my 20th year in Fort Collins this year, and I can honestly say that every single October I've been here, it snowed at least once. So this is one of those things you got to get used it's to. It's just here part in of life in the front range. <laughs> we see Laguerre tossed out of the faceoff circle, and Cote will come in for him. Now carried by Miller. Rams needing to get something put together here if they want to stay in this game. Wildcats now carrying it behind the net, trying to get the shot off from the side there, bouncing puck, but Rams able to. Carry that one away from Morgan, and I'm sure he's happy about that one. Knocked back again for another icing call for a faceoff to come back to the Rams zone. 13 minutes, just a little under 13 minutes left to go in the period. See Matthew, no, excuse me, Charlie James, who also went down early in this game and had to be escorted off by the doctor, and we're glad to see him back out on the ice. Luckily, all the players who have gone down today have come back out on the ice, so we're glad to see that no one is seriously hurt while playing tonight. This one, shot coming from the side. This one tried to go for the deflection. That was Dawson Marshall. Trying to be there for the deflection, but not able to put it in the back of the net. Now Miller able to take the puck for the Rams. He hands it off to North. North trying to backhand it around. Wildcats still showing some offensive pressure here. This one being worked around the boards. Campbell having some pressure along the boards now. Still in the Rams zone. Rams trying to knock, knock it out, and they do, but Langelar was there, and he tips it back into the zone, but now the Rams have a chance as Rams are making a quick change. North is going to dump that one around. Nitchin for the Rams is going to go across. Bumps into Bivolsic a little bit. And this one going around again. Bivolsic going to play it on his stick. This one near the blue line. Gets knocked out of the zone. Rams are going to look to turn it right back around. Joseph. Nitchin going to knock it around again. This one. Going around, Thrutchley able to get a handle on it with his stick. Rams trying to put together some plan, but the Wildcats showing some great 
Defensive pressure not making it easy. The Rams barely able to get in the zone without the puck being knocked right out. This one being carried near the boards. We see, I believe Marshall showing some of his athletic ability before he heads off. And now, Justin Dungy on the right side getting held up by Thrutchley for the Rams. Now Corey Taylor has it on his stick. Pass to Millar. He's going to look to lead the charge here for the Rams. He's going to dump that one in. Knocked towards Bavulsic, but doesn't have to make a play on it. Kept in the zone, but the Wildcats looking to take it down the other way. Intercepted pass. Moreno, well done from him to keep the offensive pressure up. Able to play it on his stick now. Now he's looking for options as he gets it contested. Now the Wildcats have the puck again. We're seeing some of that back and forth action where the puck just bounces between both teams or no team able to really hold on to possession of the puck for too long. This one coming across now, that is Joshua Larson trying to set something up for his team on the Arizona side. Tried to backhand it towards the center, but no goal scoring opportunity presented there. Now the Rams looking to take it down the other way. With Tanner Gillis tipping it in, but out of play. Now the face-off to come at center ice. And if you're a Rams coaching staff, we're only, you've got to be hoping that the team is able to put together something so that they can stay into this game. Riley going after that one off the face-off. And now if you're on the Arizona coaching staff, you're just needing to hold on to this lead as no need to make any risky plays. 10-minute warning. This one being worked in the corner along the boards. Players getting tangled up, battling for the puck. You see one Wildcat that's on the ice trying to get to his feet. That was Kevin Bird, number seven. And a loose puck, now the Rams take it away. Getting it out of their zone. That's Anse coming down the left side with the speed he's known for. Tried to backhand it towards the net, but Volsic unfazed by it. Jonathan Johnson now trying to show some pressure, but it looks like we've got a penalty. And it looks like that penalty box is opened up for the Arizona side. That is going to be Devon Langelar heading into the box. Number 21 for the Arizona side. Well, after tonight, our next game is a bit of a time break. We've got the Rams host the Utah Utes on November 10th. Will be the next home game after tonight. A little bit of a ways away. Yeah, after having this monster homestand, eight games down this homestand, and then we've got three and a half weeks to the next game. <laughs> I'm sure the Rams want to come out of their home stretch here with a win, and, but the Wildcats not ready Sun to Devils give it up without a fight. penalty is on number 21, Devin Langelar. Two minutes for holding. Langelar, two minutes for holding. Wildcats penalty at 10.36. So now the Rams on their power play, looking to set something up, but the Wildcats <coughs> doing so far a good job of not making it easy. This one coming across, backhander towards the net, bouncing puck, but the Volsic covers it up well. What did I say? Oh, I did? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't hear right, we didn't hear anything. We don't have the FCC to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we broadcast on the internet. So now this faceoff well, coming in the Arizona zone. North passing it across. Back to north at the blue line. Hands it off to Miller on the left. Hands it further down. Back to Miller now at the blue line. Passed across to North. North looking for options. North trying to get the shot. Blocked by Westland. North again. Back to Miller. Mostly being played along this blue line. The Rams trying to get something set up. Joseph passing it across to North again. North with another shot. Bla blocked by Westland again. Bouncing puck though. Rams trying to scramble for it so that they can keep it in the zone. North backhanding it back towards the zone. But it gets knocked out across the blue line. And now the Rams have to reset. 
Anse trying to backhand it in, but again, Wildcats able to get a handle on it. 30 seconds remaining in the so just a little under 30 seconds left to go in the power play. Rams so far barely even able to get a shot on goal. Let alone develop a play in the zone. This puck being knocked around. Wildcats going to knock it towards the boards again and just barely able to keep it in the zone. Well done from Anse. It's the final 10 seconds now ticking down on the power play. Casaria along the boards having some contested. And now the power play has been killed. Another missed opportunity for the Rams, as I'm sure the coaching staff will want to work on that as they're going to have a break from the games here at home. So this one coming across, shot and blocked by Morgan, bouncing puck still, but Rams able to carry that one out. Good chance for the Wildcats to increase the lead to three, but it looks like the it looks like there's a little bit of a tangle up back near the CSU net, but it looks like we're going to get an icing call. Six fifty-seven remaining. Six fifty-seven remaining in the period. After the goal scored early in this third period to increase the lead four to two. And Colorado State's gonna call a timeout. Look to see if they can maybe calm the players down and set up some sort of strategy so that they can come back in this game. Arizona gonna figure out their defensive plan and, and right now their defensive plan seems to be the better offense as they've applied some pressure onto Morgan and he doesn't seem to have a full moment where he can just relax on his own end. As we take a look to the big producers tonight for the goal scorers again, we have the two main stars on this Arizona side, Bailey Marshall and Anthony Cusinelli. Bailey Marshall with two assists and a goal, and Cusinelli with two goals and an assist. They both working together very well on that Arizona side. As far as the Rams go, not as much producing. Goals coming from Ben Joseph and Noah Miller. Assists coming from Tanner Gillis and Askel Campbell. Again, a relatively new face for that Rams side, and I'm sure the coaching staff is happy that what I believe was his first shift on the ice, he was able to help get a goal up on the board. But now we get ready for the faceoff in the Rams zone. We're going to see if that timeout will lead to a possible chance here for the Rams getting back into the game. And I think there's been some confusion from folks who have just joined us recently in the game. The arena scoreboard is offline tonight. So we are not able to show the score clock uh, as we normally do. So it's a bit of a mystery as to how much time is left. We have to wait for the announcement at the beginning of each faceoff. But uh, for those of you who would like to see us a countdown clock, believe me, I'm one of you. <laughs> We're with you all the way. Completely. But tonight it's just not possible. Uh, somebody poured a bunch of liquid into the control unit and shorted it out. So there is, there is no scoreboard here tonight. Nonetheless, we're making it work as the Rams are trying to start up an offensive attack. Rowe carrying it around for Arizona, able to work it out. And now this one knocked out of play. And that was Joshua Larson, number six for that Arizona side, taking a little bit of a hit as he knocked it out of the zone. He's gonna toss his glove into the bench. Slow to get over. Looks like he's going to have to shake off that hit he just received along the boards, but seems to be okay. Seen a lot of players taking lots of hits tonight, and we're glad every one of them has been able to walk away healthy. And now this one coming out to center ice. Thrushley is going to have to hurry for this one as Colin Olsen is right on his tail, number 14 for that Arizona side. This one coming out to center ice. It, Anse able to get it tipped off his skate, and now he's looking for options. And the official just trying to avoid getting in the way. Thrutchley passes it across. Shot coming. This one goes wide in the net. This one coming out. Thrutchley able to keep it in the zone. No offsides called. 
And say looking to apply pressure, able to take the puck back again. Looking to develop a plan, maybe something they talked about in that timeout, but the Wildcats take back possession. Charlie James trying to lead out the charge, but Rams not making it easy as Wildcats try to clear it out, but it was knocked out of play. And now a timeout from Arizona with what appears to be five minutes exactly remaining in the period. Five minutes for the Rams to score two goals to tie it up. Five minutes for Arizona to hold on to a lead and come away with two wins here in Fort Collins tonight. Again, the score is four to two. Arizona able to bounce back after the Rams were able to tie it up in the second period, scoring one goal as the second period was coming to a close to give them the lead three to two. And then early in this period, scoring another one to put the lead up four to two. We've seen the Rams before, again, able to answer when they're two goals down, but it just seems to get harder and harder each time they keep getting put in this position. Now we're gonna see if Arizona changes up any of their play style as far as what the game plan might be to how they're gonna hold on to this lead. Face off to come in the Arizona zone. Rams able to get a handle on that. Anse, Nitchin and Cote in the corner there. Miller trying to keep it in the zone, but just barely having it tipped out, and it's going to get an offsides call. And it looks like we actually had Morgan head off the bench for head off to the bench for a second, but now he's back out. We're going to keep an eye on him as. It's also hard to determine for him what is the best time to head towards the bench to get that extra attacker out on the ice for the Rams. Rams just needing to not turn the puck over. This one headed towards Bivolsic. Not worried about anything. This one now headed around towards the back end. It's a race to the puck. Bailey trying to get there for Arizona, but gets cut off and it's gonna be the icing call. And we're actually gonna see Morgan skate over to the bench and the Rams are going to start this next faceoff with six attackers out on the ice. We take a look at who the Rams have out there. Kyle Riley to take the faceoff. And it looks like they're actually moving the faceoff towards center ice after some discussion between the officials. That's going to prompt Morgan to go back out. Actually, it's not. Yeah, it will be Joe. Face off at center ice now. Cote able to get a backhander on it, but now Wildcats able to take possession, and they're going to try and set something up and take more time away from the Rams. Shot coming. That one goes wide in the net. Looks like it got deflected out wide. But now the Rams taking it down the other way. We see Morgan inching to get towards that bench. Now he's going to start skating over. Extra attacker now out on the ice for the Rams. Is it Anse trying to hold on to it? Looking for options. This one might be a chance for Joseph. Alone in the slot. Shot coming. Bivolsic able to have a good save. Holds it right into his chest. There is four minutes and four seconds remaining in the game. I believe, I believe they said 404. Four minutes and four seconds left to go in the game. But we're not entirely sure because it was kind of muddled. So hopefully that's right. <laughs> we'll see as Gillis gets tossed out of the circle for Moreno to come in. Again, six attackers out on the ice for the Rams. They're trying to just keep it from getting out of the zone. This might be a chance for him. This one knocked towards the boards. Arizona looking to get another open net goal to put this one away. Nelson going to backhand that one in 
towards the back wall. This one knocked towards the blue line. This one headed towards the net, but it's just going to go wide. Thrutchley going to handle this one on his stick, looking for options. This one passed towards the center, and Nelson kicks that one off his skate towards the boards, and the Rams can't afford to lose possession of the puck here in their own end. Moreno hands it off to Thrutchley. Rams going to try and take a little bit of time. Didn't seem like Gillis was ready for that pass, and now the Wildcats trying to take possession. This one passed across. Might be a shot coming. They're going to look for it. Back to Rowe. Rowe looking for it. Shot coming. This one goes up and over. Yeah, looks like we've got the whistle blown from the official, and does not seem like Joshua Larson, number six for that Arizona side, is happy about that. So another face-off to come at center ice. Rams have the clock working against them. And, and it actually looks like it's going to be a penalty. Yeah, number six for the Wildcats mouthed off a little too much and talked himself into a penalty. So this is going to be a big opportunity for the Rams as Morgan still remaining on the bench. So six on four. Riley to take the face off for the Rams, and I believe that is Charlie James, number 23, to take the face off on the other side. Actually heads out. Bailey Marshall getting some confirmation from the official as well. Well, we've got a herd of zebras over here on the blue line trying to figure out what, what all they're going to do and what the result of all this is. Either that or they're figuring out what kind of pizza they want. You know, cause we get close enough to the end of the game and these guys get hungry too. It looks like they're gonna fill the coaches in. As the puck seems to move back towards center ice for the faceoff. And Morgan has come back out as well. So I don't know what's going on, but hopefully we'll get an announcement soon. So we see five players out on the ice for Arizona, but yet they still have Charlie James in the penalty box. So it's still gonna be five on five. Oh, excuse me. This one coming out to center ice and now headed back as, again, the Rams have six men out on the ice, but Arizona still has five men out on the ice. Shot coming towards the net, blocked. Rams needing to get it out of their own zone. Again, the clock working against them. They don't have much of that time left. Anse gonna dump that one towards the back end. Millar and North gonna go for that one. This one tangled up in the corner. Rams losing time. Anse trying to carry it around from behind the net. Anse looking for the puck. Losing track of it, M Miller at the sh ooh with a shot, and that one's bouncing through the air, and the Volsic is going to cast that one as it comes back down. That went straight up. He got under it like he was an outfielder getting ready for a pop up. <laughs> it was that was unusual. Put him in the World Series. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Morgan stays on the bench as the final minutes of this third period are. Counting down, and the faceoff to take place in the Arizona zone. Rams to win the faceoff. Shot coming right off the face of another glove save from Bavolsi. Another faceoff to come in the zone. It looks like the official just explaining a couple things right before he gets the faceoff. He lost his footing and ended up doing a, a back flop right on top of the puck there. That, that had to hurt. <laughs> I know that feeling. This one now being worked by Nelson. He's going to pass it back to the blue line. To the other Nelson, Tyler Nelson. Joseph looking for options. Two minutes remaining in the period. The Rams running out of time to put something together. Still have six men out on the ice. They can't afford to turn the puck over. Tyler Nelson knocking it around for Joseph. Trying to go retrieve the puck and not lose it for the Rams. Wildcats now have it on their stick. Dangerous opportunity. This one knocked out towards center ice. Just looking to get out of the zone, and they do. 
Rams able to tip it right back in now. Going to go and try to chase that one as Rowe for Arizona tries to retrieve it. A couple bodies colliding along the boards, and now it's a, it's a race to the puck for the icing call, I believe. So I believe just around 1.30 left to go in the period. Rams running out of time. Arizona looking to walk away with their second win against the Rams here in Fort Collins. But Volsic just fixing up some of his gear. Looks like he's having some problems with one of his gloves. It looks like he's all there Squared we go. Away. And now we're going to get ready for the faceoff. This one bouncing towards the boards. Millar has it on his stick, passes it back towards the blue line to Miller. Miller across the north. North on the left side, dumps it back off the back wall. Marshall knocks it off the wall, and it goes into the Wildcat bench. We're going to get ready for another faceoff. Short action phases, but... Each one consists of seconds that the Rams are losing to come back into this game. Quite precious seconds here. We're down by two. Puck All being right. bounced along the boards off the faceoff. Cote going for this one. Going to try to pass it back towards behind the net. You see Campbell working for that one now. Pass back towards the blue line. North with a shot. Try to get it through traffic. Bounces off a couple skates. One minute remaining in the period. It might just take a miracle now for the Rams to get this one. Another backhander towards the net. Bouncing puck in front. Now it comes out towards the boards. And we've got a whistle. Well, we've seen the Rams score two points in under 30 seconds in this homestand alone. But I would qualify that as under the miraculous category as well. <laughs> so... Another one of many faceoffs to come in this Arizona zone within this last few minutes of the third period. And multiple players trying to cover on that one. I believe that is, I believe that's number 21, Langelar, trying to slide on that puck there. He's going to head off the ice now. And Marshall to take the faceoff for the Wildcats. So now bouncing off. Caught by Cote, he tries to pass it back to Miller. Miller tries to give it back to him. And Wildcats able to knock it out of the zone. This one's headed towards the dangerous spot and it goes right into the open net for a score. Well, that, that's probably the proverbial nail. That just might do it. That one appeared to be scored by Cusinelli. Off the loose puck and that's gonna be a hat trick for him. So a hat trick for Cusinelli as he gets that third goal. What a big night for him. Has three goals and one assist to his name against this Rams team. Thirty seconds in the period. And that goal was unassisted as it was a, a turnover at center ice, which is similar to what happened last night as that empty goal put it away for the Rams. In the final seconds, counting down as Thrutchley with a shot coming towards the side, bouncing puck, and Bivolsic able to cover it up with, I believe, just about one second left to go on the clock. Yeah, there's... And that is actually going to be it, and the game has come to a close. Arizona able to come away with their second win against the Rams. Able to take this one five to two. Well fought game from both teams. Arizona coming away with the win. Handing, their, handing the Rams another loss here at home before they start another, before they start their road stretch of games. Yeah, they go on the road here for the next few weeks. Uh, visit the Midwest, visit the Southeast, Southwest. And then we come back on November 10th to host Utah. 
Uh, and then after that, uh, the next home game is against Col University of Colorado here on November 30th. So it's gonna, got a couple of fun games in November. But this does wrap up our home stretch here in, the, in October. So we wish everyone a great Halloween and a great uh, beginning of fall. Don't do anything too stupid for those <laughs> college students that are listening. <laughs> Halloween is fun, but let's not make it uh, too memorable, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, that just about does it here in Fort Collins. Arizona able to take the win over the Rams, 5-2. to two. You were watching Colorado Sports TV. We thank you for tuning in tonight. We hope to see you next time when we are back here in Fort Collins for the Rams' next home game. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen.